what would happen to human flesh with our lightsaber. Hey guys, we got another action-packed behind-the-scenes vlog for you this week, including a little sneak peek at this controller and this power loader. You're not gonna wanna miss it. This is not gonna be red. Oh. Like, I might toss a hint of red. Like, when we shoot certain, um, what's the word, IP, so like Marvel or Star Wars or maybe even the Mortal Kombat uh, video, we try to like incorporate some color from either the brand or um, the films. So what I'm working on right now is a Spider-Man related video. So maybe I toss in a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, some white highlights, kind of give that Spider-Man color, but I also want to keep it kind of comic booky. So there's a balance. I don't want to. I don't want to make the person feel red. Oh. Like, I don't want them completely red because then they just look hot-headed. Yeah. You know. Talking about red. I like red. Can you take a step forward for me? You coming? You coming? The reason we're shooting over here on a black backdrop is for a piano gag. We're gonna drop a piano on them. Oh. Are you ready? I'm always ready. What are your thoughts on the red? Are you actually right. dropping a piano on him? A digital piano. Oh. Like, a, and not like a real piano, but like a, a digital piano. You'll see the shot. Okay. Insert shot here. Give me your favorite Peter Parker quote. Um. Pizza time. Pizza, Pizza time. <laughs> While Daryl's setting that up, why don't you and I just kind of go over what you're going to be doing here. As you know, we always gotta think about what happened right before. Picked up this awesome animatronic helmet. His eyes changed to give you that classic Spidey scowl. Ooh, classic Spidey scowl. So, our plan is to outfit this mask. Even if you can like really get to there, you're gonna be good because I'm... We're good, boy. So it's gonna be a close-up. Uh, the eyes doing that business while you're holding it. In other words, it would allow us to break this into yeah. two if we want, right? All right, Caleb, how you doing? Doing pretty well. Yeah? Okay. I'm gonna grab a microphone and then I'm gonna get one. There you go. I'm wondering, like, Spidey, Peter Parker's quite often wearing a lab coat when he's Peter Parker. True. Okay, and rolling. Our plan is to outfit the mask with multiple individual circuit boards that will be able to detect motion and output a spider sense tingle for the wear. Not bad. Let's go one more. Um, yeah, but that was great. Good job. We punch in, get the second half to tight if we're delivering 4K. Right, wide, B roll tight, wide, roll this one, then punch in, tangle for the wear. Okay, so but okay, it's not I'm good moving. enough, right? We can kind of make those calls as we go. Yeah, exactly. Okay, rolling! It's not good enough to have the entire mask vibrate. The Spidey Sense not only alerted Parker to the fact that there was danger, it also told him where the danger was approaching from. So far, so good. There you go. Yeah. You're gonna have a clean cut here. Well, the entire, yeah. Right, so let's just start here. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if someone were to drop a piano on my head from above, the sensor on top of my head would activate, alerting me to the danger that's above me. For example, if someone dropped a piano on my head from up above, the sensor on the top of my head that's important that you point, I think, at that point. The top, the top of, my of my head would trigger the buzzer in the same spot, alerting me to danger from above. Do you want me to just casually step to the side? Yeah, casually like step to the side and we'll have the piano fall. Yeah. Makes sense? What's the benefit of uh, changing the camera position for close-ups and wide? Well, like in anything, like, you know, you want a, a variety to punctuate certain moments, right? But also, it gives the editor a lot more room to work with the edit and change shots to kind of keep the pace of the video flowing and stuff like that. It also allows the presenter, in this case, Caleb, the opportunity to break this up into smaller sections so it's easier for him to get through his lines as well. Mainly it's for the edit, though. 
It would be boring if you watched an entire movie and it was just a wide shot, right? right? That was it. Cool. Cut. All right. Yep. Anything else? Yeah, I think that's it. Lunch time. Caleb's gonna taste himself uh, for a video. Exciting. Doing your rope. Action. I have a few requirements. It has to be small, because it's gotta fit in the helmet. It has to be wearable, and it has to be safe. What I have here is a dog shock collar and a taser. Whew. Mother of chicken nuggets. Wow. Okay, um, that's ruled out. You can actually see things turning on and off as you... <laughs> Welcome to Brandcast Canada. Guys, fire. Good work, Tyler. I didn't do anything. Ooh, look at all my hair that's gone. Oh my God. Ah! <laughs> Bogdan! See what happens. Ah, what's this, Ben? All right. Bogdan is prototyping um, a CD launcher. You guys need safety glasses, because we need this chatter. Okay, we'll be right back. Wait for me. Safety first. What's uh, your preferred uh, ammo? Try CDs right now, because that's what the actual gun shoots. But uh, at one point, I'll try to laser cut some discs that are metal, and then maybe give them some uh, some uh, sawtooth blades and uh, some sharp edges. You know, maybe make one that's just all the way around is just a razor. Mm -hmm. Should be pretty cool. Let's see. All right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what just happened? The bearings are dead. Those bearings are not ready for that RPM. Believe it or not. All right, so we got this box in the mail and I'm not quite sure what's inside. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, uh, it's got hair. It's got hairy fingers. Wow. Uh, I, I, I think it's a wax hand. So a, a while ago, someone reached out to me from uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in uh, Orlando, I think, and they mentioned they were throwing out some uh, some stuff from the wax museum. And they're like, "Do you guys want it?" And I'm like, "Sure. Uh, we we could use some wax body parts." And uh, I think, I think that's what this, 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 oh, it feels so weird. <laughs> this is so much worse than a mannequin hand. There's a, there's a card. Ripley's, 
Hacksmith and crew, first off, congrats on 11 million subscribers. We're almost at 12. This box has actually sat here for a bit because we wanted to film it and I knew what was inside. I'm like, oh, we need to we need to film this for a special occasion. So anyways, that's why it's taken a while for us to open it. Congrats on 11 million subscribers. I've been a, pan, a fan since the beginning. Awesome. It's been amazing seeing the projects and the channels grow. My name is Curtis and I work for Ripley's Believe It or Not. We have several wax museums and the second I saw your new lightsaber video, I knew I had to send you some spare parts, if you know what I mean. We're actually uh, about to film a lightsaber video with these spare parts. Have fun with them, can't wait to see what you do. If you're ever in Orlando, just let me know and I'll give you a tour of the Ripley's archives. We have several original movie props you have made real. Enjoy some of the enclosed pictures. If I can ever be assistance, let me know. Curtis. That's freaking awesome. Thank you, Curtis. Let's take a look at these, these photographs. What do you think is an envelope number one? Luke's lightsaber, I believe. Oh! It's Han Solo's blaster. Oh, wow. These are useful images. You can't, that's the cool thing. Like the reason he sent me these is because it's actually really hard to get detailed images of like authentic props, which is one of the char challenges in us actually trying to make a prop is we gotta go off like movie stills and you don't get that much detail. So having these is actually gonna be super useful if we ever decide to, I don't know, make another version. The hoverboard. Oh. It looks as big as ours. I mean, there's no scale reference here, but. All right, one more envelope. Any guesses? Back to the Future self-lacing shoes. They look kind of moldy, eh? I mean, these are, I mean, Michael J. Fox did wear these like 20 years ago. All right, let's see what else is in this box. Ah, it's, it's, it's too real of wonder. Uh-oh, there's, there's a head. Ah, I feel like I should recognize this. Like, I feel like that's some kind of iconic movie. Ah. Ah, ah, there's so many hands! So many hands! I got two more hands. This one weirds me out less. It feels like a mannequin hand. It's nice and glossy, it looks fake. This one more, less so. Two more. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hands. He sent me eleven hands. Ooh, and I think he sent us the big old Ripley book. 100 years of Ripley's, believe it or not. It all began, oh, by Robert, Robert Ripley. He was a newspaper cartoonist depicting sports events. But during the winter of 1918, he launched a new themed panel, which eventually became the iconic, believe it or not, cartoon. The fame of his first book gave way to a career in radio and in the new medium of television. That is freaking cool. Like he literally traveled the world during the show collecting crazy ass and then he brought it all home and made his own museum. And now Ripley's Believe It or Not, it's all around the world. Like yeah, this is freaking awesome. A little creepy, but a huge thank you to Curtis for sending us these hands. Um, let's go do a lightsaber experiment. We're shooting lightsaber versus hand video for May the 4th, because May the 4th is coming up real quick uh, next week. So we're shooting. In that room, Josh is editing as we shoot. So anytime we finish a scene, we hand off the cards to him so he can edit. It's Wednesday now. The video will be done hopefully by Tuesday next week. We'll Ooh. see if it happens. Rob is shooting. Yes, sir. Is this your first time shooting a lightsaber? It is. Yeah. yeah. Exciting. It is, yeah. Pretty, pretty good moments around here. Keep the excitement going. Yeah. These boys like to, these boys like to get up to some fun stuff. So, how many times a week do you set up the lightsaber? Um, not that often anymore. But when we first built it, like every week, I was basically like, oh, let's set it up for this. Let's set it up to cut the diamond play button. Let's set it up to cut the, uh, the safe. Let's set it up to, you know, test it. Now this one I've set up probably the third time this month. Um, I am also setting up new lightsabers on and off. So hopefully we'll have uh, another prototype in uh, four to six months. Nice. How long does it take you to set up this? Uh, usually 15 to 20 minutes. And David's here for safety. Oh, I need to see beauty. The voice oh. of reason. <laughs> Keep everybody in line. celebration of May the 4th be with you, we thought this would be a good time to answer a few more questions about our lightsaber. 
I'm talking about our current protosaver. That's right, the secret to our protosaver is a piece of tech that's been around for decades. The other big issue that lots of people have pointed out in the comments is how the length of the blade varies. You might be able to swing this around in a vacuum chamber without the blade changing at all. A lot of people also asked what are lightsaber sounds like without any added lightsaber sounds. Alright, we're gonna set up a different angle for now. This is yeah. still wide, but let's change it up just a little bit. Okay. A lot of people also ask, what would happen if you shot a bullet through the lightsaber? Would the bullet melt? Alright, so again, we'll go through the script up into the point where I start talking about my hand. Ha! <laughs> I did it. I did it. Luckily, I happen to have a box of hands that one of my fans in Florida sent me. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Karate chopping a lightsaber. I could, in fact, swing my hand through this blade without hurting myself. Now, it's important to mention, do not try this at home. Yeah, you can cut. I was like, is he about to cut right now? I'm not hiding I'm going to the Kronos isn't ready. I was like, I'm I not really want that Kronos footage of the blade yeah. disappearing. Because it, it does interrupt the blade, whether or not it burns. Everything is rolling. Oh boy, the big, the big test. All right, so this can't be overstated. Do not try this at home. I am a trained professional idiot, and uh, yeah, based on my calculations, everything should be fine. You guys ready? Hey! Oh God, the pain! Mm -hmm. Please be a money shot. If this is the thumbnail, I'll be so happy. Alright, uh, we still need to film the audio of what happens. Let's do that quick. Rolling. Alright, it's time to answer the question everyone's had. What would happen to human flesh with our lightsaber? That's a wrap! Oh, that was cool. Lightsaber versus hand. You can watch the full video tomorrow. Oh! <laughs> Still not too sure what to think about this, but hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and stay tuned for next week's. We're gonna see who wins, lightsaber or hand or headcraft. <laughs> <laughs>